Hello everybody, this is General Yanis, and today in Death Car Tactics I'm going to be doing a deep dive and extensive review on the Taliman, probably the best or one of the best support characters we have, the seventh son of the seventh son uh, possibly, so let's uh, get started. So yesterday when I was doing uh, the, the slides, uh, the 21st of April, um, it's a dark day uh, for Greek history, the, the Greek uh, junta, the, the Dictatorship started uh, in 1967 and it lasted for seven years, uh, probably not a coincident with the number seven here. And um, here was their one of their symbols was the the, the bird phoenix, that the, the bird that arises from from the flames and the ashes. But a completely different subject, a deep dive into the Taliban. Uh, were our elite uh, 30 Virion unit, uh, and I feel some sort of special connection to him. I like, I like <laughs> his, he has scrolls, he has an abacus, he has a notebook, and uh, probably I assume that is he, the Excel um, an office <laughs> in, the, in the 41st millennium. They, he, he should probably have an, a, a tablet or something, or a computer, but uh, all right, the, this will also do. So we will be looking at the stats of the Taliman, of course, his abilities, buffs and synergies, how he improves the, the damage of other units and the best uses and some interesting um, uh, strong uh, plays and combos with uh, the Taliman. So let's take a look. Starting with the Taliman's uh, stats and weapons, uh, Taliman is costing 70 points and his stats are movement 5 inch and he has a 3 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, 4 strength, toughness 5, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, 8 leadership, 3 plus save and no inval save. He has of course disgusting resilience and he has the contagions. His keywords are infantry, character, bubonic astartes, he have, of course has to select a play company, Virion, Chaos, Nurgle, Heretic, Astartes and Death Guard. And the Virion uh, makes that you can have three Virion in the elite, uh, taking up one elite slot. So it's an easy way for us to take multiple of the, of the buffing Virions. His abilities. Uh, the first uh, one is malicious calculations. In your command phase, select one plague company core unit within six inches of the Taliban until your next command phase. That unit has plus one to hit. So this is really good for uh, plenty of our yeah core units. Of course, getting plus one to hit definitely helps. And then uh, a really good ability, the sevenfold chant at the start of the command phase. If a model, if if the Taliban is on the battlefield. Roll 2d6, on 7 plus you gain one command point. So this is really great uh, now that we, we have some good stratagems in, in Death Guard and it's good that we can get more command points to be able to use these stratagems. He also has a specific uh, relic you can take, the Tollkeeper relic, so it's not his ability, but you can select this relic and it's only applicable for a Taliban, which gives him one more aura. He gives him this aura, but the play company core units within six inches when they are doing ranged attacks and modify sixes to hit score one additional hit so he gives exploding sixes which can be make up for some very uh, fun um, combos uh, for for nice shooting weapons his weaponry uh, is nothing um, particularly fancy he has a plasma pistol so um, it can be supercharged but please don't do it and kill the taliman there is no point in trying to make damage with the taliman his main use is to do the damage uh, via others and just keep track of what they are doing basically uh, so a, a simple plasma pistol and he doesn't have any melee uh, weapon so he can do melee with his four attacks using this the strength for profile he has. He also is equipped with grenades, which can be help him um, in, uh, let's say, to defend himself. So all in all, he has a standard uh, supporting character profile, like all the Virion have something like this. He has very basic weaponry for self-defense, and again, don't supercharge the pistol. Uh, I can't, I can't find any reason to do so and risk the life of the Taliban. So. But two very strong abilities, um, gaining CPs and giving plus one to hit, and the specific relic giving him a very good aura for exploding sixes. 
So the initial considerations, uh, of course, Taliban is a support character, and the reason he's in the team is for the abilities and the buffs he brings, not because he's he's doing something by his own, like a f f uh, Foul Blight spawn can add a lot of shooting, or we have some other characters that are good in melee, etc. But the Taliban is, is, is really the definition of a supportive uh, mu force multiplier ca uh, character. He doesn't bring any significant damage output, and he's weak in melee, he doesn't have any melee weapon, don't supercharge the plasma pistol. I've, I think I've stressed that far enough. He's quite squishy, so it's important to keep him protected by lookout, sir. And also as a character, he can give points, victory points to the opponent if they choose assassinate. So keep him protected. He's not in. He shouldn't be uh, in the front line. He should be protected by lookout, sir. Rules being close to vehicles and units of infantry, and probably close to the units he will be buffing anyway. Keep him protected uh, close to them and also Death Shroud could also be bodyguards. If he gets locked in melee, remember he has the grenades and can be selected for the blightening stratagem so that he's not locked up and maybe if he can survive a round of melee, he could maybe shoot this pistol six auto hitting grenades if you select him as one of the blightening uh, targets. Not a good idea to put him in transports or having him in reserves because he, he, he will not be able to use his abilities inside those and he will not be able to gain the command point or select a unit in the command phase. So put him on the, on the table. And um, the, for, for the command point gaining ability, he can be anywhere in the field, uh, protected from the enemy. And for core units buffing, he has to be close to, uh, keep in mind that he, he should be close six inch within a core unit he wants to buff in the command phase to give plus one to hit for the entire turn. Uh, the Toll Keeper Relic is a six inch aura for ranged attacks and the core units that he can buff are Plague Marines, Blight Lord and Death Row Terminators, the Hell Brutes, Possessed and the Contemptor Dreadnoughts. Those are our, the, the targets that can be buffed by Taliman. Starting with his sevenfold chant ability, as the rules are written currently, it says at the start of the command phase, basically it means it, as, as it's written, it means any command phase. So you could, you can roll on both your own command phase and the opponent's command phase. But the core rules uh, say that uh, you can only gain one command point per turn for every ability. So uh, you could roll, you have, so, so basically you have two chances per turn to get one command point and uh, a seven plus is a 58% chance rolling in both command phase should net you a command point uh, with 82% uh, chance. On average, this would give us four extra command points per game if he survives the full five turns. And because we have so, so many good stratagems to spend command points on, uh, each command point can do significant damage. So having four extra uh, is really good. Also, we have many good pre-battle relics and traits to spend command points on. For example, the Toll Keeper, the Revolting Stench Vats, Glorious Entropy Relic. I have made this, um, this analysis of how much we can gain for, for each command point in some previous videos you can, you can watch. Uh, so, so really four extra command points on average per game uh, is really strong. And just for this ability, I think he's worth his 70 points. Um, and uh, yeah. He, he likes the number number seven, of course. Uh, if we go to the malicious calculation ability, plus one to hit uh, given to a core unit and they benefit from it for a whole turn until the next command phase. Most of our core units have a three plus ballistic skill and weapon skill. Um, the exceptions here are the death shroud. They have a two plus weapon skill. If they're using the scythe profile, they're hitting on two plus and then they are not really benefiting from plus one to hit. And practically, they have three plus with the cleave profile. And of course, weapons with auto hit don't benefit from plus one to hit. So the death shroud, for example, the play gauntlets, it doesn't make any point to give them plus one to hit for those. Some weapons that we have for core units are minus one to hit. So that would mean four plus weapon skill hitting on four pluses. For example, the plague marine champion power fist, the plague cleaver, the mace of contagion. We have some minus one to hits. Uh, those will also benefit from plus one, bringing them down to three plus. So the effect of, of having, let's say, if you're hitting on base on a three plus, you should be making 67% of your, of your hits on average, four out of six. But if with the Taliban bringing it to two plus, 
you're already improving, you are doing 83% hits. So the effect is 25% more hits uh, uh, going from three plus to two plus, and it has a very good synergy with, uh, with rerolling ones. So if you add reroll ones on a three plus attack, you get 78%, but if you add 78% uh, hits, but if you add the rerolling ones uh, when the Taliban has brought the unit to two plus, you, you score almost, on average, you should be scoring 97% hits. So you have very little misses. It's only double ones, one in 36 that you would be, be losing. So really a, a big, big improvement uh, here. Also 25% here. So uh, it's 46% more uh, hits going from 67% to 97%. If you have the basis four plus, for example, for the minus one to hit weapons, the the effect, the net effect is is better. It's even higher, 33% more more hits, 67% instead of 50%. And again, with three rolling ones, uh, it, you you get a very good combo. So uh, the 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 good thing with the plus with his ability is also that it's not only for one attack. It 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 lasts for for a whole turn. So a unit could potentially be benefiting from this in their own shooting phase. Then if they charge, they can also fight with plus one to hit and also in the opponent fight phase as well. So you could, uh, you could have three times where they are, they are benefiting uh, from, from this ability. So uh, as I said, very strong synergy with reroll ones to get to hit from, from a Lord of Contagion or a Lord Chaos Lord or whatever. And having a unit hitting on two pluses, re-rolling ones, makes for 97% successful hits on average. In melee, uh, it could have also additionally synergy with Biologus' uh, ability to that sixes to wound make mortal wounds, and Arch Contaminator. So you would have uh, more chance to you have more more uh, chance to get mortal wounds with the sixes. You have more hits going through uh, with a good chance to make mortal wounds. The applicability for plus one to hit, this malicious calculations. Uh, if we look at our core units, uh, the terminators could of course benefit, but they, they have an access to plus one to hit from Vermid Whisper Stratagem for one command point. Also, if the terminators are deep striking on the game, uh, they cannot be targeted by Taliban that turn. They are not on the table. In that turn, maybe Taliban is further back in the field if the terminators are really moving forward and deep striking, they could be difficult to reach for the Taliban to give them plus minus one, plus one to hit, but they, they, we already have the Vermid Whisper stratagems to apply for Terminators. The Hellbrutes, uh, if you have a Hellbrute core, then they have access to a, the Fire Fever stratagem, giving them plus one to hit and plus one to wound. So for one command point, they can, they can get this. And uh, so, so, so Terminators and Hellbrutes can get plus one to hit with in cheaply in other ways. The good choices for the malicious calculations uh, would be, for example, the Plague Marines, Plague Marine unit, a big, big unit of Plague Marines that both have shooting and melee capabilities. They could benefit from both shooting and melee in the same turn, um, as I did uh, in, in the video with uh, in the fight I had against Ultramarines, my big squad of, of, uh, of Plague Marines, they, they shot with plus one and they fought in melee and um, in the opponent's fight phase with plus one. Contemptors, uh, which is one of the strongest shooting units we have, they of course benefit from the shooting. The possessed only benefit in melee, they don't have any shooting weapons. Foot slogging Blight Lords shooting in melee, of course, could help. Hellbrute shooting, as I said, probably better to give them the Fire Fever stratagem. And the Death Shroud don't benefit in the shooting and uh, only benefit in melee when they uh, w when they are using the cleave profile. So the death shroud are not the optimal use for the malicious calculations. He can only select one unit for the buff. So the biggest effect will naturally come uh, by applying this buff to uh, as big as unit as possible that already are doing high, have high baseline damage output and also the units that can use it in both shooting and melee. So here, uh, just an example, Plague Marine shooting uh, at 24 inches here. And so here we have uh, a Plague Marine, a shooting squad of Plague Marines, two Blight Launchers and three Plasma Guns. So two Plasma in the squad and the champion has a Plasma for, for 260 points. And here we see that the, the, 
the, the, the blue is the baseline damage across uh, 31 targets here I'm typically simulating. Here you can see targets with inval saves, with 3 plus inval save, 4 plus inval save, 5 plus inval save, and here we have uh, targets that, that, don't have, uh, that only have the armor save and no inval saves. And uh, we see that the, the Taliban plus one to hit uh, gets them the orange line, so it's 25% uh, better uh, damage output uh, than just uh, having the squad shooting, um, and uh, and with three roll ones you have the great line. Uh, the gray line it's uh, it's even more uh, buffing. Uh, if we allocate in this example all of the Taliban's cost of 70 points for this extra damage, so here we're going from five damage, uh, five wounds on average to six wounds on average with the Taliban. Uh, if we just say the 70 points should 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 give us this extra damage, it's not really in the money. Uh, you you would benefit more in this from having more uh, plague marine shooting, but it's hardly fair to allocate the Taliban's cost uh, only to one round of shooting. So you would be getting his effect from the command points and multiple rounds of buffing um, uh, units here. Here. Another shooting example, Contemptor uh, with the twin with two times the twin culverines, um, Volkite culverines, shooting at 24 inches, uh, and again similar performance uh, for all targets. The damage is increased by 25% on average, uh, going from uh, three plus to hit to two plus to hit, and with the rerolls, it's 46% uh, more on average. So you will be you are going from doing six wounds on average with the Contemptor. To 7.6 with a plus one to hit. If you add the rerolls, you are doing nine nine wounds. Again, not in the money per se, uh, but but again, uh, hardly a, the Taliban's worth of 70 points shouldn't be allocated only to one round of of one unit shooting. So here uh, I took uh, all the examples here uh, of uh, core uh, several examples here for core units uh, and the effect of getting plus one to hit. So here we have the Contemptor, a Hellbrute, we have Plague Marines with a ranged configuration, a mixed configuration where we have both Blight Launchers and Flails. Here we take a standard squad with Bolters and Knife. Here we have Plague Marines, a melee specific squad with Flails, Cleavers, Mace, Axe, Double Knives and the Power Fist. Then we have the 10 Blight Lords with standard Combi Bolters and 10 Blight Lords, a special squad with two Flails, two Reaper Autocannons, two Spewers, two Combi Meltas, two Combi Plasmas. So this is a bit a more expensive Blight Lord and more geared to, um, to uh, short range shooting with the Spewers and the Combi Meltas. And we have five Death Shroud and we have 10 Possessed. And here you see the baseline damage, uh, non-point corrected, uh, shooting at 24 inches. Of course, for example, something like Death Shroud or Possessed cannot shoot at, at 24 inches. Also, the melee squad doesn't have a big damage output. And here we see the effect, uh, the expected damage across all the 31 targets um, with the Taliban's plus one to hit. And this is how many extra wounds they will be doing uh, thanks to the Taliban. And of course, for example, for shooting, uh, the, the, the unit with, with the, the best shooting is getting the best damage, extra damage from the Taliban. So here, for example, the, the group of, of ranged plague marines and the, the contemptor with the twin culverines. Here we see at uh, a 12 inch, the Blight Lord squad here uh, gets a good benefit. And here in melee, uh, we see the squads uh, can, can benefit quite a lot with Taliban's plus one to hit. Uh, here, for example, the, the squad of plague marines can do four, five wounds more on average uh, with the plus one to hit hitting on two pluses or three pluses for the for for the for the stuff with minus one to hit and here you can see the max extra wounds if we are benefiting from plus one in both shooting phase and melee phase for the different units so the best shooting effect as i said on contemptors and the big big units of shooting marines or blight lords uh, the best melee effect on a big unit of uh, melee plague marines uh, here um, with melee weapons, and then the best combined effect on large unit of Blight Lords and Plague Marines because they can do uh, damage in both shooting and melee. So, um, the, looking at the Tollkeeper Relic and the aura it brings, um, the shooting becomes exploding sixes to hit, 
So six inch aura for core units range attacks. Each, each uh, six to hit gives one additional hit. As an aura, the aura could be increased. Uh, however, not with a Fugaris Helm relic because the Tollkeeper is already a relic on, on the, on the Tollkeeper. But you could to take the Ferryman Stratagem for one command point, could make it into a 12 inch aura uh, for a turn. However, I think, in my opinion, you are you are better using if you're going with this route. It's probably better to use it for foul blight spawn or some other aura. Uh, the, the best idea would be to have the units that would be shooting close to the to the to the Taliban in any in any case here. The effect it does is mathematically very similar to plus one to hit, so it gives on average 25% more hits for a three plus ballistic skill and 33% more hits for a four plus ballistic uh, skill. Basically, if we are shooting at something uh, uh, across difficult ground uh, or woods where we are getting minus one to hit. Again, the Toll Keeper has a very strong combo with reroll ones to hit uh, that gives us that gives us higher chance to get sixes or mortar, even Mortarions re-rolling everything. But however, uh, normally the mort Mortarion would be benefiting more, giving it to himself. There is no particular extra added benefit from other sixes to hit ability, like the Sigil of Decay for Bolters and Marines. In this case, uh, a lot of people are asking, will, how will it, this count if you get sixes to hit with the Sigil of Decay? So in this case, with a Tollkeeper close by, you would be getting uh, a six to hit would make one auto wound and one extra wound roll uh, from the toll keeper. So the effects here are additive, not cumulative, so that or not multiplicative together. So additive means that if we are getting one extra wound from Sigil of Decay and one extra wound, let's say from the toll keeper, they will be getting two. We are not getting 2.5 or three wounds because they they benefit each other. But for example, the reroll once will get you more sixes so that's a combo that uh, that uh, that is improving the effect of of the of the um, of of the ability so the tollkeeper relic aura the which units uh, is it applicable to uh, the good choices uh, are plague marines shooting with many special weapons it's fun to see a blight launcher uh, getting exploding sixes or a plasma gun or some of this heavy, heavier weapon, the Contemptor shooting, especially the Twin Volkites, can be really uh, devastating. I will show you some examples soon. The Blightlord shooting, the Hellbrood shooting, um, any any of these units, uh, especially with, with lots of shots and lots of good uh, high damage shots, uh, will be benefiting from the Tollkeeper Relic. Not applicable for the Possessed or the Death Shroud. The Death Shroud, they don't have a hit roll. The Possessed don't have anything to shoot from. And, and remember that Tollkeeper, unlike the plus one to hit, can affect multiple shooting units at the same time as long as they are within the six inch aura. So this effect can be multiple if you have multiple units around him. So uh, a super combo example here uh, would be a Taliman with uh, the Tollkeeper and the Chaos Lord giving their rerolls herding a, a pack of Contemptor Dreadnoughts with Twin Volkites, which seems to be a crazy weapon right now with a lot of mortal wounds. So in this uh, scenario, the Taliban could select one of the Contemptors to be hitting on twos, two pluses, the two other uh, will be hitting on, on three pluses, and then you have the exploding sixes when they are shooting. Each one with the two Twin Volkites will be sh shooting 16 shots, so you have uh, a good chance of making more hits uh, than than uh, than than you actually have have shots uh, with exploding sixes, and here you can see here a contemptor with a twin culverin a volkite uh, would be doing the light blue damage across the the, the targets on average around five five six um, wounds on average across all the targets here, um, and then if we add the reroll ones with only the toll keeper we get uh, we get the dark blue so. Um, uh, 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 an improvement across the board and then if we additionally have the plus one to hit for one of the contemptors we get even more and here it summarizes the 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 the, um, the contemptor with no buffs would be doing six wounds on average with uh, only reroll ones it will be doing six to seven wounds on average uh, with rerolls and the toll keeper um, 
uh, and then the plus one to hit will be doing 10 and the contemptor re-rolls once and the toll keeper will be doing eight nine if additionally we could be uh, stacking up even more uh, for example sickly corrosion on the target with uh, a mortar or something some other plague weapon would would give reroll once to wound minus one ap would ben benefit the volkites because they have ap zero but then each contemptor the, the contemptor with plus one to hit reroll once plus the toll keeper plus the ap minus one from the inexorable play company plus six sickly corrosion to reroll once to wound we were doing 14 wounds on average but if i only take the taliban and the chaos lord 70 points for the taliban 80 for a chaos lord for the rerolls and um, for these three contemptors will they would be giving 10 wounds more than just having three three contemptors with with uh, six uh, six wounds so and uh, i've made a, a little a little video from tabletop simulator to roll some dice for you and you can see a bit the the effect and i, I can't wait to do this combo uh, in uh, in real life uh, rolling 16 dice with exploding sixes Okay, so here I, I want to show you the example of uh, contemptors here, buffed by Taliman with a toll keeper and the Chaos Lord for rerolls, shooting uh, at five eradicators. Let's assume these guys are eradicators here. And um, uh, in this scenario, Taliman can give um, plus one to hit to this contemptor, and then the other contemptor can fire without the plus one to hit. But let's start uh, shooting the first contemptor. So it would be having, uh, it has eight attacks per each Volkite, so it has two, so it's 16 dice. And I hope the dice will behave for this demonstrator. It typically doesn't go well when you're trying to show something. But let's uh, see, now we're hitting on two pluses and re-rolling once uh, from the Chaos Lord. So that's uh, good. So we got three ones, those we can re-roll and everything else is hit so far. And we got uh, 16 hits, but we got three sixes here. So with the toll keeper, we are getting three extra hits here. So we, with 16 shots, we hit we hit 19 times. Now uh, with strength six, we are wounding the eradicator's toughness five. Uh, we're wounding them on three pluses, and we don't have any rerolls in this scenario. And the sixes give mortal wounds for the volkites. Let's see. All right, so this was a very good result. So here uh, we hit 16 times and we have already four mortal wounds. And, uh, and now the, um, the, the eradicators can save on a three plus because the AP is zero here. Let's see how many they save. So in this uh, really good, <laughs> this was really good scenario. Uh, they were saving. Uh, so they were saving. Um, so they got, they got uh, every uh, one of these unsaved dice gives uh, two wounds, and uh, and then we had also four mortal wounds to to account. So this is one dead eradicator, two dead eradicators, three dead eradicators, four dead eradicators, and with the mortal wounds, the squad is wiped. Uh, but okay, I could also roll uh, worse here. This was a, it was was a very good roll. Uh, let's. Um, let's uh, clear here let's try if we don't uh, get the plus one to hit another scenario let's say so this is hitting on three pluses with re-rolls a re-roll once let's say nope come on yeah oh that was uh, that was not the bad roll so six extra dice here so this toll keeper can really do good uh, really good good stuff if you are if you are doing this and uh, so here we have 19 hits and we're wounding again on three pluses, no rerolls. And we got here five mortal wounds uh, and we lost uh, this hit. So we got 11 hits. Let's see, plus five mortal wounds. And now the eradicators can save. They didn't save three. So that's one dead eradicator, one damaged. And then we had um, six six mortal wounds so quite many eradicators also dead in this uh, in this scenario uh, what we could do more uh, in this scenario was if we wanted to have re-rolls on the wound rolls we could use for example the um, cyclic corrosion with the mortar applying um, uh, the corrosion to uh, to the to the squad we are shooting and then we would be re-rolling the ones with the volkites 
Another thing we could do would benefit, let's say that we had uh, something uh, close by that could put them in contagion range, they would be suffering in toughness. If we have the inexorable uh, we, with flash outbreak, we could have the the eradicators here or the opponent unit um, uh, being tagged so everything that shoots gets minus one AP and this on the Volkites that's that's a good uh, that's a good um, uh, good thing and uh, yeah in, in a game you might want to maybe have some pox worker screening out this group um, so that you can um, you do, they don't get locked down in melee uh, but here, so so in the in 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 very extreme scenario here, you would be hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. You would be wounding on uh, still let's say threes or or, or twos for some units, uh, re-rolling ones due to cyclic corrosion if you play that strategy for two command points, and then. Uh, the saves would be worse for the opponent if you could apply the inexorable uh, minus one AP to the Volkites. So this um, this uh, shows a small small simulation of, of these dice, and I, I don't have the contemptor yet. I've I've ordered some, and I'm really looking forward so they they come so I can I can uh, do the rolling in in on a real table. So, uh, and then a final super combo, example two. So here uh, it's more geared towards Plague Marines. So here I'm looking at the Taliban with a Toll Keeper Relic, plus a Biolog Biologus Putrefier with Arch Contaminator, escorting a mixed squad of 10 Plague Marines. So in this case, we have two Flails, two Blight Launchers, the Champion with the Power Fist and the Plasma Gun. In this scenario, these 10 Plague Marines um, are, are moving within 8 inch of an opponent, they shoot in the shooting phase and then they charge, they make their charge and they, they fight against this opponent. And then they have been selected by Taliban to have plus one to hit in both shooting and, and fighting. The Toll Keeper uh, helps them while they're shooting and the Biologus uh, also in the charge uh, selects uh, the unit to give uh, that sixes to wound, give mortal wounds in melee with plague weapons. And then I'm also considering the trench fighters uh, to give extra attacks with knives, uh, having even more possibilities to do mortal wounds. So here you can see uh, down here uh, the shooting attacks. Uh, the blue is without the Taliban and Biologus Putrefier. The gray uh, is with uh, the Taliban uh, and, and the Arch Contaminator from the Biologus Putrefier. The orange is the melee attacks for the standard, uh, the two flails and the, the plague knives and the power fist with, with uh, only the plague marines. Then it becomes uh, with the Taliban and the Beolgus, you get the, the yellow one. If you add the trench fighter, you get the light blue one and you're starting to get to do crazy damage. Uh, so here on an Imperial Knight with this combo, you would be doing 24 wounds on average. So you can almost take down an Imperial Knight with this, uh, this combo. If you add the shooting to that, you probably take it out. So here we see the, the 10 Plague Marines, this squad with no buffs, it would be doing four wounds on average shooting. And in melee, it would be doing 10 wounds on average, still very decent, good, uh, good damage. But if we add the, the Taliban's plus one to hit, the Toll Keeper, Biologus Purifiers, Mortal Wounds, and the Arch Contaminator, we will be doing uh, seven wounds in shooting, 21 wounds in melee, so 27 wounds in total. So 12 extra damage across the board here uh, with, in, with this uh, combo. And if we add the Trench Fighters, it helps the melee for one command point, we'll be doing 18 more damage. So six more damage here by adding the trench fighters. So you can do some, some really, you can stack some nice combos and uh, synergies with, uh, with the Taliban on the board. So some summary and final thoughts. I think the Taliban is one of our best variant choices. I would say the best. Um, just for bringing us the extra command points on average four per game. He should be in the in the in the list. I can't see any any list that wouldn't benefit for 70 points just to get four extra command points that can give us relics and, and useful stratagems like the blightening, uh, mutant strain, or whatever. Um, so I really I really think just just by this he's bringing a lot to the table. Additionally, the plus one to hit adds 25% uh, damage on average on a core unit. It's, he has a additionally a great synergy with the role lord giving reroll ones to hit so that 
that makes us 97 percent of the of the of the dice will be hitting in this combo the toll keeper relic gives an additional 25 percent for core unit shooting and can affect multiple units as an aura also great synergy with the rear or ones to hit fishing for more sixes exploding sixes and take the relic if you have shooting core units uh, uh, I would say that the command points will be worth it if you if you are taking content if you have contemptors if you have shooty plague marines of course if you are blight lords but of course not for death shroud and for many for if you if you are if you are more planning into go melee probably uh, I wouldn't take the tollkeeper relic but for shooting units I would I would definitely uh, take it as as shown. There are some special strong combos, for example, with Contemptors, with Queen Volkites and Plague Marines, um, that the, these units can otherwise don't get, uh, cannot get easily plus one to hit in other ways, while Terminators and Hellbrutes, uh, they have stratagems that can help them, so the Taliban has uh, especially strong benefit for Contemptors and, and Plague Marines. So the best use, as I see, for the Taliban is keeping him alive, so he can bring the command points, and continue buffing uh, shooty core units like uh, the Contemptors and Plague Marines that can, or mixed, probably the best idea is to have him together with mixed Plague Marines that can benefit both in the shooting and the, and the fight phase. Um, so uh, this concludes the, the video. What do you think about, about the, the Taliban? Um, I think also in the game that I played, he already showed his worth. Um, and, and performed really well, even if I didn't get to use the Tollkeeper effects <laughs> at any point in, in that game, at least. But uh, but he's really performing performing well. What are your what are your experiences with the Taliban on the table? Um, if you like this, uh, yeah, please leave some comments. If you like this video, please press 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 like and subscribe to my channel, where I will be bringing you more uh, in depth and and reviews of of Death Guard math and other Warhammer subjects. And uh, if you want to further support my efforts and if you appreciate all the effort I, and, and time uh, put in to, to bringing you this, this math and this analysis, please visit my patron page. Please become a patron and uh, support the work. Take, take part in this de defining the roadmap um, and uh, get access to some, uh, some additional content. And a uh, very special thanks to my patrons uh, for suggesting also this uh, video uh, and, and the deep dive into the Virion characters. So with these words, uh, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.